So I'm actually shooting this a little out of sequence because for some reason I didn't shoot it when we actually did it. But um, with your kit from Chesapeake, you get a gallon of this, uh, of the low viscosity epoxy resin. And then uh, I think it's about a quart or something like that, or maybe a half a gallon. It's a half a gallon of the hardener. And it's a two to one ratio. So one of the things that I did, um, one of, the biggest thing is this has been done during COVID. And so they were using the pumps for other things. So they weren't selling uh, the pumps. But um, after COVID, make sure you get your pumps because it's, you know, be two pumps, one pump. And it really helps because what I was doing was pouring it out and it gets your hands messy. So make sure you get yourself some gloves. So I just did two parts and one part, filled it in a, another uh, little small plastic cup. You can always have enough of these plastic cups and stirred that around. I, I also went out and just purchased, oh, like from a craft supply store, just a bunch of craft sticks, tongue depressors. Uh, and that's what I use for stirring. And I also use that for anything else that I need. So once you have that all mixed up, uh, what you're gonna do is you're then, with your kit, you're gonna get this uh, wood flour, and really all it is is, is sawdust. And then you're gonna mix it. So in the, you're gonna mix that to the consistency of a mustard. So you want it to be able to run through because what you're going to end up doing is sucking this out from your mixture and then using that to apply to those epoxy welds. So make sure you get enough supplies and we're going to now go in and do those welds. So this is kind of my practice area um, because this is not going to be seen. You can kind of see I'm kind of making a mess. But I want to get to the point where this is going well. And then by the time I get to an area that's going to be seen, Hopefully I'm gonna be a little bit better with my technique. Now, one of the things that I am gonna do, I'm gonna get some tape, because one of the things that, that the instructions say, when we go back and after we take out all of the the copper and where I just have the boat welded together uh, what I'll end up doing is tape along these seams so that when we put this next mixture in uh, what it'll be is and I'm gonna kind of keep that because that looks to be open there um, the seams will be really clean well, this is, we want to take a little bit more time with this one here. Since this area will be C. 
assim. I still have the ability to come in here and and uh, take in sand. finished tack welding everything in place uh, some of these forms will come out as soon as everything dries I'm looking down to some areas in here that looks like I'm gonna have to do a little work because there's some gaps in there that'll be easy enough to fix we'll either fix that with putty or, or um, some more of this wood filler but I'm pretty happy uh, it looks as though it's going to be a tight ship because this is the very first part. So once we finish up and these tack welds get hardened, I'm going to take, because I've seen this on some other YouTube videos, I'm just going to go ahead and take out all of the, the copper wiring at this particular point because it should be stiff enough. Now there's some other areas in here where I think I want to do a little bit more uh, work on, but... That, that's okay. Uh, as you can see, we've kind of got this in, and and it looks pretty good from this end. I'm gonna make sure that that is setting there straight. I'm gonna put another piece of tape there so that it's flush. But we can always sand that. It's not that big a deal. And we'll end up sanding this all down. But it's looking pretty good. We'll take out all of the copper. And then, as you could kind of see with what we were doing with the wood putty, we're going to make that a little thicker. 
they actually look for something that is, I can't remember what the consistency is, but the consistency is going to be pretty thick because um, you'll actually squeeze it out like a dough and we'll get in all of these areas here. Now, one of the things that I am going to do is one of the suggestion is because you want, I, I want these seams to be pretty straight. Um, I'll take and get some painter's tape with the copper out and I'll tape straight lines down through all of these so that when I put this mixture down, I'll be able to pull it up and it'll just be, the lines will be really clean. And then what we're going to do is we'll put in this three inch tape all along here. We'll take and uh, fiberglass that in with some clear and then we'll actually come back in after those all dry and fiberglass this entire hull with these forms out. So that's going to give us the stability to take the forms out. And then the next step after that is we've got the forms for the top. So I, um, actually it's not. I think the next step is once we get all of this done, we're going to flip it over. We're going to do a lot of work on the hull itself sanding it down, making it look nice, and then we're going to do some fiberglass on the other end of that. So there's quite a bit going on here. In between that time, that's when I may start, and actually I could start on the other hole now, and it's possible because this all has to dry, and so there's nothing else really I can do here, with the exception of I may, you know, go out and buy some things that I can uh, put on my put my uh, chisels and things like that up on the on the wall there working in limited space like this um, you know everything's at a premium I can move stuff to the garage but that was one of the reasons why I got this out here so that I could um, have a place where all of the tools and all that will reside but I do find myself going back and forth quite a bit between each one of those areas so I may start the haul uh, on the other one, but I'll do it in the garage. Thanks for joining today.